Looking for a dual SIM phone means you're automatically narrowing down your choices. One of the new kids on the block in the dual SIM world is the Sony Xperia E Dual. How does it hold up? Find out in our review. Hey everybody, I'm Chris Wook. While everybody's going nuts for Sony's new high-end phones, they're quietly releasing low-end phones on the side as well, like the recently released Xperia E Dual. Now it's got dual SIMs and a pretty low price, but it's also got some pretty low-end specs. How low? Let's find out. The Sony Xperia Dual runs a 1GHz single-core Qualcomm Snapdragon processor and has a 3.5-inch HVGA display, 512 megs of RAM, and 4 gigs of internal storage expandable via the microSD slot. It features a 3.2 megapixel rear-facing camera and is powered by a 1500 milliamp hour battery. The Xperia E Dual has a classy look that is more in line with older Xperia devices than the new high-end models everybody's talking about. The angular design, glossy finish, and color-changing illumination bar all add up to a phone that has an interesting look. The phone feels pretty solid, if a little weighty, and has a short, chunky look. All the hardware buttons, which are the volume, power, and dedicated camera buttons, are located on the right side, while the headphone jack is on top and the micro USB port is on the left side. The display is definitely the lowest quality feature of the Xperia E Dual. Even at 3.5 inches, the 480 by 320 resolution and pixel density of 165 ppi just doesn't look nice. Pixelation is apparent in a lot of places and leaves text a little difficult to read. Video and images fare better, but you're probably not going to be doing a lot of reading or watching on this phone. Performance isn't super, but is better than you might expect. There is occasionally a little stuttering when scrolling through home screens or the app drawer, but apps launch fairly quickly. And 2.2 benchmarks averaged a score of around 5,500, and Epic Citadel averaged 29 FPS, but keep in mind, it wasn't pushing too many pixels. Unlike the standard Xperia E, which runs Jelly Bean, the Dual runs Ice Cream Sandwich. A Jelly Bean update could be on the way, but considering it could have shipped with it, I wouldn't hold my breath for an update. Sony has skinned the interface with a themable overlay, which you may or may not like. Besides the usual Google apps, Sony has included a few other apps like Walkman, its music player. Other apps include Office Suite 6 and Track ID. The 3.2 megapixel camera isn't very impressive. Even in broad daylight, photos I took on the default settings ended up looking fairly dark. There was noticeable artifacting and visual noise present as well. No front-facing camera is included. Video is even worse, with the resolution topping out at VGA resolution, or 640x480. It's alright for a quick clip, but the video won't look great on a computer. While the battery capacity is only 1500 mAh, battery life wasn't bad. It's possible to run it down fairly quickly, but during testing I got over 6 hours of heavy use. Normal use should allow the Xperia E Dual to last a full day without a charge. The battery is removable, so you can replace the battery or carry an extra if you need it. Basically, if you're looking for an inexpensive dual SIM phone, you'll be hard pressed to find a better deal than the Sony Xperia E Dual. Now, if you don't need dual SIMs, there are plenty of better options at that price. Want to know more? We have a full written review at AndroidAuthority.com. You can find the link in this video's description. Now we have new videos going up all the time, so if you don't want to miss anything, you might want to subscribe to our channel. I'm Chris Wook for Android Authority, and as always, thank you for watching.